Okay, so what we're going to add this time now is the four chord. Okay, and of course we started with the concept that melodies outline certain sort of shapes, and one of the most common is this three, two, three, two, one shape. And when you have a melody that follows that contour, the harmonization is one, five, one, five, one. And what we looked at is if my final chord resolves to tonic, right, that the natural resolution of the five chord to one at the cadence is two in the soprano comes down to one, the bass ascends five to one, the uh, one of the inner voices will move seven to one, so three voices converging on tonic. And we end up, therefore, with an incomplete chord with three roots, a third, and the fifth omitted, right? Because you leave out a five, the fifth for an incomplete chord. Um, that leap of five to three in the inner voice, right, historically, is filled in with the passing tone, right? Uh, five, four, three. And then when the four is subsumed within the five harmony, that's where five seven is invented, right? And so we looked at the complete five seven with all four pitches, G, B, D, F, in the key of C, resolving naturally to the incomplete one chord without the fifth. But we talked about how composers, J.S. Bach among them, I call this the Bach cheat, right? Will, in an inner voice, will sometimes resolve seven to five, right? It's not the regular resolution of the leading tone, but it's an acceptable way of sort of voicing the final chord at the cadence in order to get a complete one chord. Instead of cutting out the G. Yeah, instead so of cutting out the G. Okay? Uh, but that is sort of breaking the part writing guidelines. I call that the Bach cheat, where seven resolves to five to get the complete one chord at the end. Um, but this idea of the 5-7 chord, right, also begins to shape melody. And we looked at, shall we gather at the river as an example of a chord, or sorry, of a melody that shifts 3-3-3-2-3-4-5-3-4-4-4, three, 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 four, three, four, 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 right? That has a lot of emphasis of 4, and the harmonization of that is with the 5-7 chord. And what we discovered however, is that's an incomplete 5-7 chord, right, with the fifth omitted early in the phrase. Just going over this quickly as review. So there's three on a G then. Yeah, and so, well, you have the, the root double. Right. And then the third and the seventh. Oh, and the seventh, okay. Yeah. Right. And so what, what I sort of want to impress is that we would anticipate the complete 5-7 chord at the cadence, right? The incomplete 5-7 chord is the common use of five, seven, and four voices early in a phrase, right? Um, where basically the melody has shifted away from scale degree two as the point of emphasis to scale degree four as the point of emphasis. Okay, so just making sure that the concept of complete five sevens, which can either resolve to an incomplete or a complete one chord, and incomplete five sevens, which resolve to a complete one chord, and sort of be aware of where those are used, okay? Um, what I want to talk about today, though, is another chord that can harmonize category four, particularly um, at uh, early in a phrase. Um, let me give you one melody here. Um, one, five, one, five, one, two, three, one, four, four, one. Yeah, I've been working on the railroad. One, five, one, five, one, two, three, one. And so what we would say in this opening part, all of these notes, one, five, one, five, one, two, three, one, right, emphasizes the tonic triad. It's all about one, three, and five, with the exception of the D, which, of course, is a passing tone. Okay. Right? And Shanker would look at this and say, although we have all this one, five, one, five, one here at the beginning, we work up two, three, one. There's the emphasis of three. That then resolves to 
four. Does that make sense? That's so we hear this shift of the overall sort of melodic direction from three up to four. On purpose. Okay, yeah. But if I play uh, I've Been Working on the Railroad and try to use the 5 7 chord here, right, which worked for Shall We Gather at the River, um, I don't think you'll be satisfied. So here's my. Five seven here doesn't sound doesn't right. work. Yeah, it doesn't sound right. Okay. The reason that chord doesn't sound right in harmonizing four has to do with this leap right here. The melody leaps four four one four one, and remember where a melody leaps, the assumption unless there's an appoggiatura, which which can happen, but I would suggest in this case that's not, this is not an appoggiatura. Usually a leap in a melody is to a chord tone. Does this make sense? So if we're on four and we leap down to one, the harmonic implication is that one belongs to the chord as well. Okay. Does this make sense? Yes. Which is why the five seven chord it doesn't leaps. sound good right there. Because when we leap to the, one, to the one, then that's not part of a five seven chord. Right. Does that make sense? So we need another harmony here. Sure. So if if I'll just draw it right here, if scuggery four is part of the chord. And scale degree one, which is what we're leaping to, four down to one. If both of those notes are part of the chord, you know, the A is then the A is implied, right? This is actually the triad built on the fourth scale degree or the subdominant chord. Okay? And so that what I'm what I'm trying to demonstrate is that when melodies shift from three to four, there's almost a choice. Some melodies shift to four and the chord is five seven, shall we gather at the river, which we saw last time. Right. But some melodies shift to four, and the chord, the harmonization might be the actual okay. four chord. And it really depends on what the melody is doing. Where is it leaping to? What are the other notes that are implied in the melody? Does that make sense? So the four is going to sound a lot better. Than the yeah, for sound. this melody, it's the four chord because of the leap to scale degree one. Okay. So if that's the case, then we just we just simply need to part right this harmony. So the bass note of this harmony. First of all, the notes of a four chord in C would be what? F. Right? Yeah, F A C. F A C. And of course my bass note will be F. The F. And it really doesn't matter. I can put the F here, I can put the F here. Okay. You know, I'll drop it, just it, you know, puts it in the low that's a true bass line. So okay. you can put the F there, you put middle C where it is. Yeah, so I have an F in the bass and F in the soprano. I need an A and a C. And again So I would leave middle C. Yeah, and you are gonna leave middle C. One point I would remind is that when you resolve a chord Remember its function, because chords resolve by their function. A tonic chord has tonic function, and we learned that tonic chords, when resolving, tend to resolve by common, common tones. tones. So, so in D, the C, C would, be, would be held. Right. And then the, the... The G would be up to an A. Yeah, the G simply moves to the A. And then look as it resolves back. These simply move back by step. The C is held, held, right? One hold over one common tone, right? Yeah. The rest by step. Yeah. So this progression one four one is really a pretty easy progression to write. Does that make sense? Um, so um, can I put that sound? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. From the one that was the five seven to the four. Yeah. So when I play it, I'm going to take the bass F up an octave because I can't. I can't reach that far, but. Okay, and so if I've been working at the railroad has this contour and this is the harmonization, I can use those, all of those notes. Sorry. Yeah, much better. Right. Yeah. So much I mean, stronger of a change. From yeah. The one. Yeah, and it has to do with what the leaves are. Okay. And four one is plagal, correct? We'll talk about that in just a second. Yeah, the term plagal refers to the resolution of four to one. Four to one. Absolutely. Correct. Okay. Talking real quickly about the function of this chord. Okay. Um, the term we use for a one chord that goes to a four and comes back to one is tonic expansion. Okay. 
Some books call it tonic prolongation. Either term is fine. But the idea is that this chord prolongs or sort of expands the sense of this chord. Okay, And I think in this progression that's not hard to understand because notice really what this chord does is create some harmonic neighbor tones to the tonic chord. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And some uh, other textbooks will actually call this a neighbor chord. Because oh, a neighbor it, chord, that's in our book, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. So, yeah, if, if the textbook you're using in theory uses that term, that's what they're referring to. The chord itself creates this neighbor tone motion, Four which means in terms of harmonic hierarchy, the tonic chord is the important chord. The four chord is simply an embellishment. Right. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the last thing you mentioned, um, Plagal, is that we can add, at the end of a cadence, the, the Plagal progression for one. This has the sense of amen. The amen cadence. You know, the amen cadence. Um, functions the exact same way, right? This is still a tonic chord. It resolves by common tone, right? The other yeah. voices move by step. by step and create the neighbor tones, right, with the common tone right. still head. So in terms of resolution, tonic expansion functions like a tonic chord. Right. They, they, tonic expansion and tonic expansion chords resolve by common tone, typically. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and you can place that at the end. So now I have... Of, now, the term I use for this, just by the way, um, is, and this is a little different than some textbooks, is plagal cadential extension. This is getting a little nitpicky with terms. Some books call it plagal cadence, and it depends on what you're really using the term cadence to mean, and there's sort of two ways to use that word. Cadence can simply mean a progression of chords. And when you play your cadences in class piano, you know, right, it's a progression of chords. But um, a lot of textbooks and a lot of theorists will use the word cadence to mean the end of an actual phrase, that moment that the phrase reaches closure. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Um, and if we're using the term cadence that specifically, then this is your cadence, the 5, 7 to 1. Does this make sense? Absolutely. And this is where the melody comes to an end. And this is what we call cadential extension. When it goes A series of chords, chords yeah, that simply add to this moment. Extension. Just like an amen. Right. Um, I jokingly call plagal cadential extension is like a garage. The real part of your house ends here, and then you tack on a garage. It's just adding something. It's just adding something to the end. And if, you know... God bless you, the tornado comes through and blows off your garage. You still have your house. <laughs> right. It's, it's almost sure. superfluous. Just like, even though, like in church, you know. That's what I was going to say. Was we, we usually just have, like, I was just going to say it yeah. sounded just like the end of a church. Hymn. Yeah, like an amen. But, but I've also, I, I'll do a survey. And, and usually people don't sing the amens anymore. We all know that they're there. Right. But, amen. you know, and it, and it doesn't, you still know what the hymn is, if, even if we don't do the amen. Right. The other one I'll mention that's worth listening in, and in class I'll use as an example. The Hallelujah Chorus, uh, oh. that ends, um, oh, the song. King of Kings, you know, see, for, uh, reign it forever and ever, hallelujah, That's what hallelujah, okay. hallelujah, that, one, one, four, one, 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 four, one, 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 four, one, one, four, one, one, four, one, it's like a page and a half of Plago Cadential Extension, it's the biggest garage ever, if you think of it that way. But the piece reaches its final cadence with the one. back with the one chord, and then you have all those sort of superfluous hallelujahs at the end. Now, can you have different cadential extension cadences? Uh, can you have what you can find? Authentic cadential. Well, extension? this would be the perfect authentic cadence here, and then this would be the extension of that perfect authentic oh, cadence. Okay. All right. Does that make sense? Uh, and so, and we'll keep talking towards that. But basically, just a little bit. Um, more specific use of the word cadence, okay? And so I refer to the 4-1 added at the end as plagal cadential extension, not plagal cadence, because the cadence is here. The plagal progression extends the cadence. It's not a separate cadence to it. Sure. Okay? 
will stop that one.